Um, before I get into some of the stuff we're going to talk about, just want to give you guys a little bit of a rundown in terms of how receiving metrics work and probably um, dispel a couple of myths that maybe you guys have um, about this, this whole um, kind of new age of evaluating catchers that we're in these days. So um, things that you need to know, strike probability. So very simply, right? Every pitch has a coordinate that it goes through, okay? X-axis and a y-axis, just like you guys learned in math class when you were growing up, okay? So, and because of that, we can decide, based on past history, how many times it was called a ball or a strike, okay? So if you look at the, the green one, okay, that's a ball, okay? It's 49.5%, okay? If you look on the other side, they're just a little bit inside the box is a 96.6% strike. So the first thing that we, I want to make sure that you know as we go through this whole thing is the strike zone box on TV is not necessarily a representation of the strike zone. Okay, so when you watch a game on TV and there's a ball that looks like it's off the plate, okay, it might not be off the plate. Okay, sometimes they're in the box and they're not high percentage strikes. Okay, every one of them is different. I've seen every single one of them as we've gone through at the course of last year. They're all very different, so don't use that for fact. Okay, um, we'll we'll kind of look at you know what the strike probability is as we go through, and we'll figure those kind of things out um, as we do that. So. Uh, the next term that's important is expected called strikes. So once you know the strike probability, that will give you a number that is, you know, like this 49.5% strike, right? So the expected strike value for that is 0.49 strikes, okay? So, uh, and the last thing is called strikes, okay? So if we look, when we're looking at metrics, SL plus, the first one, and the most, probably the most common one that we use um, is simply called strikes, okay, over expected called strikes, okay? So if you had one pitch with a 0.5 strike probability, Okay? And you got it called a strike, right? You get credit for 1 over 0.5. Okay? And that's how you get your SL plus number. So the good receivers in Major League Baseball are just are over 100 somewhere. Okay? The guys that struggle with that statistic are under 100. Okay? And um, so it's an average-based statistic, so it's one that's not going to dock you as much for sample size. So if you're a backup catcher in Major League Baseball, okay, and you roll in there once or twice a week and play, okay, you're not going to get hit for not playing as much as Yadier Molina is going to roll out there for 130 games a year, or even more when he was playing a lot. So now, SLAA, on the other hand, okay, strikes looking above average is a counting statistic. Okay, so if you look at that, okay, if you see that anywhere, um, that's one that will reward the catchers that catch the most, okay, um, that catch well. Okay, obviously, if you catch a lot and you catch poorly, okay, your number, you'll see your number go down. But the guys that catch a lot typically are the ones that catch really well in SLAA. Okay, um, just because it's more counting based rather than average based, if that, if that makes sense. Okay, so um, one of the big issues with metrics for catching is that people say, well, the leaderboard changes every year. These things can't be right. Okay, um, but what you'll find as you go through is, first of all, if you look at the last three years, the last five years, there's a pretty significant group of three to five guys that are in the top 10 every year. Okay? because they do a really good job year in and year out of working on a lot of the same consistent hand patterns that you see and have honestly been coached for a long time. Okay? There are some things that we're doing differently. Okay? I won't, I'll be the first person to admit that, but for the most part, the guys that can keep their glove below the ball, that can work positive angles and work the ball back to the middle of the strike zone are going to be the ones that do that the best. Okay? At the same time, just like any other stat, like some years, there's that, there's, there's that crazy year where some guy hits 320, right? He's not a 320 hitter, but he has one really good year. Okay, he jumps in there, okay, and then he jumps back out, right? He kind of regresses to the mean, if that makes sense. Okay, same, same's the case here. Okay, so it's just important that you guys realize that, hey, while some, some of this stuff goes in and out, okay, some guys tend to, you know, be really good a lot of the time. Everyone talks about Jonathan Lucroy because he was a, when these statistics kind of first came out, he was one of the highest ranked receivers, and then he's kind of regressed. Okay, he's also gotten older. Okay, and he's also played for I think three or four different organizations in the last five years. Okay, so he's catching a lot of new pitchers. He's aging. Okay, he's getting in a lot of situations where guys are typically in a struggle. Right, it's just, it's it's much easier to catch the guy that you've caught your whole life than the guy that you catch for the first time at a showcase. I think all the players that are here can uh, resonate with that a little bit. And the last thing is just sample size is important. Okay, so if there's if you catch five pitches and you steal one strike, your score is going to be off the charts. Right, it's going to be awesome. Okay, so when our when one of our guys comes in in the seventh inning and his score is outstanding or it's horrific, okay, we're not too worried about it. But we want to make sure that the scores are really good as they go through the course of time. Okay? That's really important for us. So um, now that we have an understanding of the metrics and how that kind of works out, okay, I want to make sure that um, you guys kind of understand one thing 